Greetings, North Central Washington. Welcome to Network TV. I'm your host, Jenny Rojanasatian, Executive Director of NCW Tech Alliance, and I'm so delighted to have you join us today. At NCW Tech Alliance, we are passionate about fostering innovation, collaboration, and growth in our community. Our mission is to drive the advancement of technology and support the development of a thriving tech ecosystem in North Central Washington by supporting technology, entrepreneurship, and STEM education initiatives. Today, I'm welcoming back two of our previous guests, Dr. Sue Kane, Director of STEM Initiatives and Strategic Partnerships, and Pete Phillips, Executive Director of Technology at the North Central Education Service District. I've asked Sue and Pete to come back on air to dive into what's new with the North Central Education Service District and to learn more about this year's annual STEM Summit STEM Summit, which is fully back in person for the first time since the pandemic. Before we bring our guests on air, I'd love the chance to briefly introduce both of them to you. Dr. Sue Kane brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table. With a background in molecular biology and a PhD in biological sciences and infectious diseases, she's used this background to advance STEM education across the region. She's been recognized locally as well as across the state through her appointment to the uh, STEM Innovation Alliance by Governor Inslee. Her commitment to shaping the future of education and supporting STEM initiatives has created a wide impact across the region. Pete Phillips serves as the Executive Director of Technology at the ESD. He has an extensive background in engineering design and technology design education. Pete has been instrumental in his career with empowering students and educators with the tools and skills needed to thrive in the digital age. His years of service at the ESD, compared, coupled with his active involvement in organizations like NCW Tech Alliance, really show his commitment to growth across the region. Together, Dr. Sue Kane and Pete Phillips are gonna share their insights, experiences, uh, what's happening in technology education, as of course, what's happening with the STEM Summit. Get ready to be inspired and learn all about their work in the episode ahead. Don't go far, we'll be right back on air on NCW Life Channel. And welcome on air to Network TV. I have two guests for today's episode, Dr. Sue Kane and Pete Phillips, both with the North Central Education Service District. You guys are regulars at this point. Yeah. So welcome back on air. Yeah, like old times. Like old times. It's been yeah. a minute though. Yeah. It has been a minute. And I feel like the last couple times I've had both of you on air, we were still very much in a pandemic uh, environment where a lot of things were shifting online. There was more virtual experiences. And so excited to be back in a safe way and doing more in person. For sure. Um, now, if our guests have missed previous episodes where I highlighted your stories and backgrounds, I'd love to kind of do a quick refresher. So Pete, I might start with you. Sure. If you could, um, f first let's have you introduce yourself and then we'll maybe dive into what is it, what is an ESD? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Um, I'm with North Central ESD. I'm the technology director there. I've been there for a long time. I came out of uh, K-12 education back in the day, but uh, right now my current role is uh, really around STEM and instructional technology and uh, as we enter into all things new technology. So just providing uh, resources for our teachers and our staff and our districts to continue down this ever-changing technology road that they're faced with every day in the classroom. And it's, it's changing fast. It is changing every day, as yeah. we all know. Yeah. We were just talking about all the, all the stuff on, yeah, on our phones. Yeah. Yes, new stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. And Sue, how about you? So I am the Director of STEM Initiatives and Strategic Partnerships for the North Central Education Service District, which is a mouthful. Yes. Um, but that is a role where mm -hmm. I get to play in that inner space between our K-12 and higher ed and industry and uh, put together the types of partnerships that we need uh, for youth to find their future career paths. Um, there's a lot of STEM, a lot of technology uh, skills uh, that they need along the way. And so I get to work on the development of those regional partnerships to make that possible. Now, STEM is something that has really become part of the vocabulary in the education system, I think in the nonprofit. But there are still some people who uh, perhaps their kids have been out of school a long time, don't really know what STEM means. 
Sue, can you break that down? What, what does STEM mean? Yeah, so we've been working actually on STEM education for the last seven years, and it was a really frequent question in the beginning, what yeah. is STEM? And people thought maybe we worked on STEM cells. That's not true. Yeah. Um, but STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And really, it's not an um, ingredients list necessarily. It's really the magic is when those things are integrated. And I like to use the analogy of packing a bag for the future because I'm working mm -hmm. on uh, building futures for young people. And um, if we pack science, technology, engineering, and math into a young person's backpack, we have them best prepared for a variety of, of futures. So students that have STEM education experiences um, have more opportunity after uh, mm -hmm. their formal education. Um, they're more likely to go to uh, college and career and have resiliency. We saw that in the pandemic. Um, individuals who have STEM literacy uh, were more likely to come out uh, okay after mm -hmm. the pandemic. And so it's really a matter of making sure that everyone has access to STEM education and the integration of those skills as a way to um, future-proof our kids, if you will. Yeah. And then that backpack of skills that they're building it, does, it doesn't mean that they have to then be a, in a STEM career to have benefited from the STEM education process, right? That's right. We've actually done an analysis. So in North Central Washington, um, we find that the significant majority of the jobs that pay enough to support a family require some kind of STEM literacy. And they are not all in research and development or um, you know specific IT roles. Of course, those are. Um, but roles that include STEM literacy, uh, you know, might be in business and um, might be in healthcare, might be in agriculture. Um, we find that that STEM skill set is really essential for a lot of those different types of skills across the sectors. So, <clears throat> so even if a parent or an educator, someone's watching, they go, "Hey, you know, my student wants to be an artist, or they want to pursue." Um, an entrepreneurial path, their STEM is still important part of the makeup process and, and important in our schools. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Pete, tell me a little bit about, um, through the ESD, how you've helped support STEM integration across the 29 school districts because you have a massive footprint that the ESD serves. Yes, we do. We have one of the largest geographical areas in the state as far as ESDs are concerned. And the Educational Service District, there's nine of us okay. geographically broken up. So we're in central Washington. We have our 30 school districts or so that we support, plus or minus with some private schools and charter schools and everyone in this uh, four county region. Mm -hmm. But um, I love the idea of the STEM literacy, and that's kind of our main goal. But at the ESD, <clears throat> one thing we get to help solve is the STEM literacy of our teachers as well. Okay. So preparing our students for the world of work or that next step, whatever that might be for them, is one part of this. But preparing our teachers to be able to help prepare those students mm -hmm. is a huge um, um, issue. It's a huge task that we're trying to help solve. And so that leads us into the second half of this conversation that we're going to talk about today, providing professional development to bring those teachers up to speed on all things STEM yeah. so that they can better prepare our students. Mm -hmm. You know, something that wasn't on the question list, but that just came top of mind, it, in today's career environment, people are often switching roles every couple of years compared to maybe the traditional mm -hmm. roles of the past where you stayed with one institution or in one field for a full career. Education, though, is still very much rooted in a long career. Even if you might be switching schools, our educators are so passionate about what they do. It seems to be a role that they're still having these 25, 30 year role, roles mm -hmm. just in education, mm -hmm. which means that their time from their uh, teacher training in a college system, there's a lot of years to come in between. So tell me a little bit why professional development for educators keeping top of mind um, and, and current is so important. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Education is a calling for uh, mm -hmm. most of these folks. And so it goes beyond uh, what you would typically do in a career, right? There's right. a lot of, of desire and a lot of internal need to help these kids, which is amazing, which is why we love our teachers yeah. all over the place. Um, but yeah, the, the changing landscape, if you just start at the top with the jobs that these kids are going to get or the careers that they're going to get two or three or four careers down the road, right, as they change careers, everything is changing and technology changes so fast uh, and it's very difficult for our educators to stay up on those best practices. 
And so um, the professional development for an educator that is in the same classroom for, mm -hmm. for a long time or in the same career, even though they're switching schools or switching districts or even content areas, is so important for them to have the time to learn new skills and to practice that uh, education in the classroom. And technology specific, I mean, obviously you have a dedicated role to that because it's such a huge topic. Mm -hmm. Often schools don't have the internal resources to have trainers in technology, right? Mm -hmm. School districts vary in size and capacity um, and education experience. So the ESD really fills that need. There's some other um, institutions that are helping with uh, technology. And I'm thinking about TEALS specifically. Sue, maybe you could talk a little bit about how organizations like Microsoft have funded programs like TEALS to help technology in schools. Yeah, uh, TEALS is a really incredible professional development model. Um, Microsoft actually started that here in Washington and has now gone across the country and into Canada and Mexico with TEALS. And what it is is a, a program where they um, Zoom or Skype or sometimes in person, um, bring a technology professional in to provide the content expertise alongside a teacher who's learning how to teach that. And we've been able to get, um, this is actually the first academic year we just wrapped up, um, computer science into all of our school districts across North Central Washington this year. I think we might be the first in the state to have done that. That's huge. It is mm -hmm. huge. Computer science um, across all. And we could not have done it without this Microsoft Heels program, but it allows um, the teacher to learn from that industry expert for an entire year as they work their way through the computer science curriculum. And then the next year they switch places and the teacher teaches and the expert is there in case they need it. Um, and then uh, after that, they can graduate and that expert can be called back in whenever they're needed uh, to be able to provide that professional connection for students or content expertise again. And we see a lot of our schools who have done that TEALS program feel bold enough to take on a new topic. So mm. it's really exciting this year across North Central Washington, we have cybersecurity, we have some artificial intelligence, we've got some advanced computer science software development and a data center technician program, all expanding from those TEALS courses and those teachers who got really great professional development. Well, it's really exciting that we've seen that success when in 2015, I think it was three school districts mm -hmm. that had computer science. Um, and now just eight years later, all of them, and that's a huge kudos also to the ESD because it's the ESD providing kind of this source of education and resource, hosting TEALS outreach events mm -hmm. so that they were aware of it. Mm -hmm. Um, this first 10 minutes has gone so fast, we're gonna dive into the STEM Summit next, which is the really heart of today's conversation. Don't go too far, we'll be back on air with Sue and Pete from the North Central Education Service District in just a minute. And welcome back to part two of our chat with folks from the North Central Education Service District, Dr. Sue Kane and Pete Phillips. We talked all about the ESD, a little bit about professional development, technology, computer science, uh, a subject really close to our heart at the Tech Alliance. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're gonna dive into the seventh annual STEM Summit. So Pete, I'm gonna send it to you first. What is the STEM Summit? This is uh, a capstone event for us annually as mm -hmm. we try to uh, just convene uh, the educators in North Central Washington and around the state. We expand this uh, statewide. 500 educators coming in person, three days full of all things STEM. So we have 100 plus sessions that they can choose from. It's a typical conference type of venue. Uh, we have amazing keynote speakers uh, that kick off each day and um, we take care of them all day. We feed them and we build them up and get them ready to start their year off. So it's really the kickoff for our teachers to um, get trained up in all things STEM at, uh, in Wenatchee at the Convention Center. Why, um, why a summit just on STEM mm -hmm. when there are so many topic areas that the ESD te teaches on? Yeah, so going back seven years, it was really a hole that needed to be filled back mm -hmm. in, in, in that day. Um, there are conferences, as you can imagine, in education for every subject matter, specifically okay. for science or specifically for math or early learning or mm -hmm. technology related. <clears throat> but there wasn't anything really that focused on the whole integration of the STEM program. And so we are um, one of the largest STEM summits or conferences in the state still and uh, our teachers seem to just love that time frame of getting this type of professional development right before they head into the classroom. 
Sue, I'm going to turn to you a little bit. Um, tell me what's been so special for you to see at the STEM Summit over the years and what you're excited about this year. I love that this is a conference that serves you know, K-12, but then we also see uh, community partners, early learning, educators, higher education kind of sneak in there as well. And I think it's the, um, the holistic, ab absolutely great opportunity to make vertical connections. Mm -hmm. You might be a second grade teacher who now learns what's going on with first and third and seventh grade. Um, I love the um, connections that we see start there as people learn something new together and they innovate and you see uh, different collaborations either across districts in our region, uh, across grades, or um, you know even new partnerships between some of the community-based organizations that come to share what they've been working on with our teachers. So it's just a great nexus place for collaboration and connection. Building on that, you know, uh, Pete, you said earlier in the last segment that education is a calling. Mm. These are really, our educators are really passionate people who deeply care about making an impact. Um, so this is a chance to m meet with their, their peers and their community in a way that they probably don't often get to. Yeah. Correct, yeah. In some of our small schools where there's one third grade teacher or there's one high school math yeah. teacher, they're on an island. And yeah. uh, if you ask me the same question, my favorite yeah. thing is the energy at this. It's a mm -hmm. super relaxed setting, but the energy that we get from Watch People Network mm -hmm. as they do during the breaks or in the sessions, they're meeting people from other schools and these teachers are now able to bounce ideas off of someone that they just cannot do in their own district or their yeah. own building. So building those relationships is huge at the STEM Summit. And, and I imagine, too, that collaboration, they're pulling back content and ideas from best practices elsewhere that they don't have to invent the wheel, right? That they're getting these playbooks and accessibility to, to help make their world easier. Because we all know teachers have a hard job. They have one of the hardest <laughs> jobs out yeah. there. Yeah, there was actually a STEM Summit speaker a few years ago that said um, that teaching is actually more difficult cognitively than rocket science. You are literally oh. thinking about, you know, if you're a classroom teacher with 30 kids, 30 different kids, 30 different needs, I have this content, I gotta get them somewhere. It's an insanely challenging uh, job. Which is why we love our teachers and need to support them mm -hmm. in every <laughs> way possible. Sure. Uh, Pete, can you tell me, um, so we've talked about educators and Sue talked a little bit about how other community partners come, which we'll talk more about towards the end. How do people get to go to the STEM Summit? So if an educator is watching today who's based in the region, how can they sign up and participate? Yeah, you bet. Uh, all the information is on the ESD website, okay. and uh, we have links directly to the STEM Summit. Um, the STEM Summit is actually part of a cooperative that we run at the mm -hmm. ESD for our science, um, for our science kit, science coordinator uh, members. And mm -hmm. so those districts, which is almost every district in our ESD, mm -hmm. can attend and send all their staff for no cost. Wow. Um, outside of that, there's a small fee for the three days for, for what we give them, but um, super easy to sign up. It, registration is open, available uh, right now to pick your sessions and get that all planned out. And so just head to the ESD website and off you go. Perfect. So I'll turn to you maybe to talk about the business integration. Uh, there's two opportunities this year. There's the keynotes that are happening that the business or nonprofit or general community member can attend. And then there's the AI Expo, but maybe we'll start with the keynotes. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, so there are three keynotes. Um, the STEM Summit has a tradition of bringing in just incredible dynamic speakers. And it's first thing in the day. It's an hour um, that is sure to you know recharge you, inspire you at the start of the academic year, whether you're a teacher or a community member has just this sense of optimism and excitement and anticipation and um, the STEM Summit every year. It's just one of those really neat opportunities if you're interested in coming and hearing from three incredible dynamic speakers. I know uh, Pete has more details about yeah. you know the specifics of the individuals uh, coming but um, we are opening that up so that folks who are interested in attending can actually reserve just a ticket for the morning keynote sessions and get in on the inspiration and the start of each day. And that's huge because these are national speakers these who are, are coming yep. into Wenatchee. Worldwide. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like what a unique opportunity to get yeah. to hear in person. Yeah. And for today's audience, I think uh, like Sue alluded to, these uh, speakers are going to tie in how a community member or a business owner or a parent 
can uh, help the education system, help the teacher and help their kids um, promote STEM and get plugged into their school district. So uh, this is going to be super cool to tie K-12 to the entrepreneurial business side and uh, our speakers are going to make a purposeful uh, effort to give resources to business owners and people in the community to get involved in STEM. I love that. Mm -hmm. So uh, look for that in the ESD site and then we'll also be promoting that in the Tech Alliance, including the AI Expo. It's going to be our third one, first time in person. Pete, can you tell me about the AI Expo? Well, we don't have time to get into AI, yes. <laughs> but yes. we can talk about the Expo. But AI is definitely one of the emerging trends that um, we've all heard about. It's on the news. It's affecting us in our daily scrolling on our phones and uh, is no different in education. There are so many resources for our teachers to be able to implement artificial intelligence in the classroom. So. Um, partnering with the Tech Alliance and putting the AI Expo um, integrated into the STEM Summit is going to be a huge win um, to uh, expose, basically, expose our audience and our teachers about uh, how to use AI in the classroom and the effects on our community. Yep. And <laughs> so you've talked a lot about how people are scared of AI. Yeah. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. There's a lot of misconceptions about artificial intelligence and what it means for us and what it might mean for the workforce. And so uh, the goal this year for the AI Expo is uh, to create a safe space for you to come mm -hmm. if you have questions like, is my Roomba AI? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the very starting, like, uh, foundational, I'm not entirely sure what this is or how it's going to affect me, is welcome, as well as the advanced uh, AI uh, who's really excited about how it might improve efficiency in the different ways that they're doing what they're doing. Um, and we want to be able to try to create a space that's welcoming and supports conversations in all of those levels. Mm -hmm. It's a big ask, um, but we're super excited to welcome our, our community and our educators into that conversation. It's a really timely, really important conversation. I, I think it's been the hot topic of this year, along mm -hmm. with cybersecurity, which is something that the ESD supports, but we don't have time today to go too much yep. into that. Mm -hmm. So the AI Expo, open to community, business, and all of the attendees of the STEM Summit. Um, thanks to Microsoft, I think that's a very small ticket fee for the community and of course for the educators will be free who are mm -hmm. participating. Yeah. And that one is August 17th. August 17th, save the date for that. As always, this goes so fast. So thank you, my favorite returning guests. I think I can thank officially you. say that. My, yeah, yes, my favorite sure. returning guests from the ESD. Um, check out the work. What is the website of the ESD? Can you it remind me? It is, yep, ncesd.org. Awesome. And everything's there on the front page. Get all of the resources and follow online. Thank you to our audience for tuning in this week to Network. We'll see you in the studio next week.